Hello everybody and welcome back to Spellweaver. I promised you deck building last week. And to deck building we will get, hopefully. Because there are um, other things kinda related to the uh, deck building that I want to address first. Um, but I hope we'll have some time to build the... Uh, the uh, Green Goblins deck, uh, maybe maybe something usable. Hurry up, just a few minutes are left. Yeah, I'm afraid I won't be hitting the Crystal Fiesta today because I'm recording, as you can see. Oh, we have a lot of people. Cruel, of course. <clears throat> anyway, so you can see in, the, in this left hand, uh, bottom left hand corner. It says Mono Souls, and if you are, <clears throat> you might notice that this is something you don't recall. Yes, because it is a new deck. I kind of felt like it, and I rushed a um, Mono Souls deck. This is just a yet another vari variation of, of of the Dark Souls that I built a while ago, before Banshees became all the rage, and everyone was playing Banshees because oh my god, so OP. Yeah, I basically sat at this deck, and I was like, "Do I really need? Um, do I really need this um, Dominion here?" And the basic idea with Dominion was, uh, it kind of complements the deck. Yeah, we have uh, added mana in the form of power surges, also added draws because it was kind of kind of lame draw wise. It had the chalice that gives some boosts. It has some nice bodies to keep me going before I get to the uh, um to the soul's flood. Also, this deck was still built with uh, more of a. Xiara and attacking with souls in mind rather than um, rather than healing. So I have zombie giants, which are tough. I I have silver silver blade warriors. I have thunderstorm titans, spoiled aristocrats. You know creatures that will deal a lot of damage. Um, and wreck my opponent if I cannot draw Xiara and uh, bring a flood of chains with her. A flood of souls. I know why I said chains, because the souls are enchained. Yeah, also this kind of weird spoils of war here. Banshees, Hans, this like the core stuff. Uh, skill shrines that serve little to no purpose in this deck. I basically wasn't really happy about this deck. It was decent before people came with the um, Banshee Rage, and it was still able to pull some OTH. But then, uh, yeah, like, like basically Banshees became ultra popular, and, and people started to learn to play against that. So it was no longer that viable. And I was like, so, why why Dominion? Like, Xiara requires four levels. Only two of those are um, Corruption. The two were uh, neutral. So I was like, yeah, let's, let's get something else. Because why would I ramp up to four Corruption? Although then I realized that actually Corruption is uh, one of the aspects, if not the aspect, that can benefit the most from having um, uh, same aspect uh, levels over the top. Corruption has the only card that requires three corruption levels. That is Bezarok, if I remember correctly. Yes, you saw that correctly, I'll talk about it in a second. Yep, Bezarok is the only card that requires three specific levels. I think I was talking about it last week, wasn't I? Uh, regardless, whether I was or whether I wasn't, that's the fact. Also, they have the... Um, what are they called? They have consumed spirits that scale with the corruption levels. They have um, words of pain that scale with the corruption levels. 
any card, uh, I mean, any faction has their own, any aspect has their own word, or though words are not made equal, and that's a huge deal. I really don't know. I'm so confused today, oh my god, I have no idea what I was uh, saying when talking with people on the forums and what I said in video, <clears throat> but regardless. So I figured out that actually corruption makes some sense to run it with four corruption levels. So I went and built Mono Souls, which is Souls deck with Xiara, built purely on corruption. And let's go quickly over what I have here and why I did what I did. So, four Noxious Fumes, four Plague Vermins, four Consumed Spirits, four Hunts, four Death Curse Shamans, four Mesmerizing Spirits, three Splitting Headaches, one Tombs of the Damned, um, four Shrieking Banshees, three Reanimates, one Suffocate, five Infernal Tributes, one Succubus, two Xiaras, and eighteen Corruption Shrines. No Skill Shrines whatsoever. Why is that like this? Well, let's start with the most obvious things. So, four hunts and four banshees are to build as much souls as possible. And these cards combined, if you execute them properly, they drop a lot of souls uh, easily to... Have I said shrines before? Oh my god, this is not a good day to record a video. Anyway, um, I have to record it today. <laughs> um... What was I? Yeah. So those were like no-brainers. Um, two Xiaras, I would consider going up to four, but I have only two, so I went only with two. Um, this is like core, okay. Then, still kind of in the core, um, four Noxious Fumes, four Consumed Spirits. This is removal. Primarily. Four Mesmerizing Spirits, some fairly early drops, uh, forcing uh, opponent to discard some cards, that's uh, handy. Um, uh, uh, what else? Um, possibilities to attack, like uh, I could force some creature that probably has more health than two to fight me if I have already sub sorry, substantially hunted this creature, like with two hunts or something like that. I sometimes do that, and it is fairly benefiting, even if you will destroy the creature, if you can, like, drop double hunt on it, and then force an attack to to execute both hunts at the same time. This is four spirits for free. Then you can sack those spirits, drop a banshee, and there's, like, five souls from a banshee. If you can sack those and follow it with another banshee, that is uh, uh, eleven, if ten or eleven on the or the on the next banshee and 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 something a similar amount of health got gotten. Oh my god, this is so bad. Why is this going so bad today? <clears throat> Whatever. So um, yeah, spirits, good thing. Uh, splitting headaches. Now, honestly, they are going kind of as a filler, but they are going as a filler that really fucks my opponent over. Making them discard two cards hurts. And this deck, frankly, is often staying empty at the turn 3, or actually turn 4, because it's the double levels and 3 mana, so it will be turn 4. Uh, yeah, but, you know, at the ramp, this is something that is empty. At turn 3, I will be dropping Mesmerizing Spirit. And then at turn 4, I can follow it with Splitting Headache. Ideally, at turn 4, I would be dropping Tombs of the Damned. And Tombs of the Damned are kind of a failsafe. Um, if I had more Tombs, I'm pretty sure I would play with more Tombs in this deck. Yeah, because I said, this is a failsafe. This is a... Um, card that allows me to pull something out even if my opponent is ultra bitchy about uh, triggering hunt or dropping creatures that I could kill so that I could respawn them with uh, banshees and it's like I had games where I'm floating like three or even four no actually I don't remember uh, floating four but I had games where I was floating three banshees in hand 
but there was nothing on, on board, or there was like one creature on board, and it was totally pointless to drop Banshee at this time. So this is uh, kind of a failsafe, you know. If soul safe, then I get a steady flow of uh, zombies that can either be a huge annoyance to my opponent and can keep them in check, or uh, can protect me from my opponent attacks, provided my opponent attacks slowly. Three reanimates. This card serves a double purpose, really. Really double purpose in this deck, because I realized with the prevalence of decay in the current meta, uh, and the decent popularity of this card, although not, although not as much as decay, cards often end up in your graveyard. And if I'd happen to get an early Xiara in the graveyard, like T4 Xiara in the graveyard, I can reanimate her, and reanimating Xiara from the graveyard allows me to drop her three turns earlier than I would do from um, uh, from whatever it is called the uh, thing. Yeah, the thing. Graveyard. Hand. From hand. Playing from hand. Ooh, that's gonna be a bad video. Oh my god. <clears throat> So, reanimate helpful. Also, reanimate is helpful with the Banshees if I happen to have no Banshees in hand. But I have Banshees in play, or even better, Banshees already dead. I can easily reanimate them to benefit with, with more spirits. Souls. Yeah, souls and chain souls. Uh, what this allows me to do, I am playing much more deliberately with Banshees right now. It's like I'm 100% eager to sacrifice a Banshee right now. Because, once again, I don't really care that much about attacking or blocking with the souls for that matter. So, having other creatures is not that important to me. It was kind of important in the Dark Souls, because as I said, I wanted to attack with those souls. So other creatures, before I was able to get Xiara, not only they provided bodies to, um, you know, deal something, do something on the board, they also, um, they also provided the uh, ability to use uh, shrines that I could have gotten from, let's say, Hunt or some early Banshees. If I did not have Xiara. With Mono Souls, it's no longer that important because this deck is more, more focused on um, on healing rather than killing. So, yeah. Now we get to the interesting part. Like, let's first of all look at the shrines and why I have only uh, standard shrines and no skill shrines. Well, I was really thinking about it, and I realized that getting more of the, um, not more, that skill shrines from pure corruption are not really helpful for me. If we'd get to deck editing, what shrines could I use? Well, there is a soul prison that I miss, which could have been somewhat helpful, although not extremely. I'll explain later. But I have four haunted cemeteries, and well, I I could I could drop whatever. But I have haunted cemeteries or mausoleum of the damned to be chosen. Let's start with the mausoleum of the damned. The next time you play a level one creature this turn, an enemy creature gets minus one, minus one, minus one until end of turn. So first of all, it's a temporary effect. It acts only till the end of turn. Kinda sucks. Next, I have. To play a level 1 creature to trigger it. Well, this deck is not running too many level 1 creatures. In fact, this deck is not running too many creatures at all. I have only 19 creatures versus 23 spells. So, yeah. I have Plague Vermins and I have Death Curse Shamans, although they are a story on their own. Let me get to it later. But they are a story on their own and they serve a different purpose than... Uh, Sorry, I could have with the uh, with this shrine. If I were to put this shrine in the deck earlier, uh, no, in a, uh, 
other way around. If I were to first stock this deck with Plague Vermins and Death Curse Shamans, then maybe I would have thought about putting some of the... Um, whatever they are called. What are they called? Um... The, the Shrine. Mausoleums of the Damned. But at that time, I still had empty slots, and this is what I usually do when I build a deck. That uh, I drop some cards that I feel like are core and necessary for a build. And then I fill it with... Uh, then I fill it with Shrines to make sure that I have the required amount of Shrines. And then I start dropping other cards... So, yeah, with that said, I dropped the Shrines before I dropped the level 1 creatures in this deck. And I figured, yeah, not really running too many level 1 creatures. There, are, there aren't really level 1 creatures that I desperately want to run in this deck. I don't think I will... I don't think I will be triggering this ability. I won't have ways to trigger this ability, because I won't be playing creatures, especially level 1 creatures. So it's dumb. Uh, the second uh, thing is the uh, the zombie fight thing, Hunted Cemetery. And why I gave up the idea of Hunted Cemetery is because it requires me to kill, okay? And again, with killing, I would either have to work with my removal or... Uh, or... Uh, um, or have something to attack with. Like, I... Don't really, um, don't really plan to have creatures to attack with in this deck, so that's out of the question. And do I want to base my uh, all my removal on uh, arbitrary useless shrine? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. It's like it was kind of, sort of like uh, weighing this, how much benefit it will give me, and it's like some zombies. That with a little bit of luck I would be getting with tombs. Honestly, like thinking about it right now, it's not that bad. Because I'm having a decent amount of removal. Though it has its flaws. Like, it only summons a zombie. The next time an enemy creature dies, this turn, summon a zombie the general to the field. So regardless of how many creatures I kill, it drops only one. And one zombie is not really helping me that much. It has an extra cost, etc, etc. I figure out that maybe additional card will be more beneficial for this deck. All in all, it might be worth it. I don't know, honestly. Anyway, let's, let's get to the filler cards, because everything else in this deck, well, kind of splitting headaches are a filler. Uh... Have I talked about Noxious? Yeah, I talked about Noxious, they are removal, keep the board empty before I can um, establish the position. So does Consume Spirit, although it can be nicely used to boost some attack, to um, deal some damage. My favorite thing is to use it on my creatures if I have Xiara. Like, if I had Xiara and Tombs, I would use it to kill a freshly spawned zombie that cannot attack anyway boost something, either a soul or Xiara, depending on the board situation, and go for even more insane damage. It's like Xiara dealing 9 damage, ouch. Plus uh, 500 souls behind her, ouch. Uh, really nice combos. <laughs> and since I'm going up to 4, um, up to 4 corruption levels, this thing can remove, well, pretty much everything. There is very, very few creatures that can withstand this. I've thrown in three Infernal Tributes, and honestly, the more I play with it, the more I think I don't like it. And this somehow goes with the... Uh, with why I wouldn't put the Soul Prison Shrine in this deck. After all, I mean, I could have put it earlier on, but definitely not after playing this amount of games I've played with this deck. And seeing how Infernal Tribute works. Honestly, the uh, the thing I most commonly use the Infernal Tribute for is Divine Offering. Because if I have creatures on my opponent's end of the table that are heavily hunted, 
I don't want to give them an opportunity to get rid of those creatures easily. And that's what they will do with Infernal Tribute. And so they would with uh, Soul Prison because they have to sack something and they can choose what they are sacrificing. So totally useless, but it is staying for now. I have this Suffocate. Uh, frankly, I don't really think I have ever used it. But the idea behind Suffocate is... Uh, this is something to get me out of uh, dipshit. Yes, I'm saying it. If I end up in a situation where my opponent has a lot of things on their end of the board, and I have nothing, or best case scenario, if I do have some stuff, uh, but I also have 7 mana and I have a Banshee in hand, Suffocate wipes the board, it's almost like Kata, there are there is very few creatures that can withstand the uh, effects of Suffocate. So I use it, I wipe the board, potentially gain a lot of shri a lot of Unchained Souls from the Shrieking Banshee. Although as I said, more often I end up not using it because I don't have enough mana to follow it with a Banshee, or I don't have a Banshee to, to follow it, or I already have so many souls that if I would use it I would lose them and it's more beneficial for me to suck the souls and play Banshee. Or suck the souls, play Banshee, suck the souls and play second Banshee. So all in all it's not really working like I imagined it to work. But it has a purpose. Yeah, Splitting Headaches, I put them kind of as a filler, I wasn't really um, that concerned about them, but they work. One Succubus, again, filler, but this gives me this uh, nice ability of dealing some face damage to my opponent, should it be necessary. Let's assume I, I play this sort of weird game where I end up with a decent amount of... Uh, Spirits and, and, and Banshees and Vermins, Death Curse Shamans, whatever. In a situation of or even zombies from Tombs of the Damned. In a situation where I somehow ended up uh, dealing a decent amount of face damage to my opponent. And Succubus would kill them, that helps. Also that's some additional healing should it be needed. Yeah, this is this is like a wild card. I honestly put it only because I had leftover space and nothing better to put it. This is something that is not a problem and is definitely beneficial one way or another. In the worst case scenario, she can always be used just for the sake of attacking. Whatever. Let's get to interesting stuff. Uh, things that at some point, I'm not sure, really sure where, but I was pretty sure at some point that I want either one of these two. In the end of the day, I ended up taking both. Death Curse Shaman and Plague Vermin. Why? Removal, once again. Uh, Plague Vermins are a little bit less so, because... Um, I have to sacrifice them, and when I sacrifice them, they deal only one damage to another creature, which is sort of not too helpful. But uh, they are really helpful if I can already get Xtiara into play, because I can just turn them into more souls, because they have only one health, and Xtiara gives minus one, minus one to everything that is not spirit, and it is not spirit. Similar goes for Death Curse Shaman, although Death Curse Shaman is uh, more of an annoyance. Annoyance slash early drop. Like, people are freakishly worried about those. I'm telling you, like, people are getting rid of those the very second they show up. And still they wreak havoc! Your opponent attacks. It deals one damage, it dies. You either deal face damage to your opponent, or you use it to remove your opponent's creatures. Your opponent is a crazy... Uh, not crazy, your opponent is a clever girl, and instead of using creatures to get rid of it, he's playing the empty board and uses some spells to get rid of it. You deal face damage. 
Your opponent is thinking he's cool and is doing nothing. You deal face damage by just attacking with this guy. These are perfect, and while I did not really consider them as such at first, right now I think they are really core of the deck. And talking about Plague Vermin, they serve the additional purpose uh, of being sucked to kill DCS. And it's if my opponent is getting getting tricky and doesn't doesn't want to um, trigger Death Curse Shamans and has stuff that I want to get rid of, possibly hidden in the back lane. Um, I could always use Plague Vermin and trigger the uh, Death Curse Shaman this way. I sacrifice Plague Vermin. I deal one damage to Death Curse Shaman. Death Curse Shaman dies. Not to mention they are insanely useful when. I have Xiara in play, so I just drop them, they instantly die, and they spawn a soul, and then I can use durability. So I kind of spontaneously built this deck, uh, pretty much right after last week's video was recorded. Uh, yeah, that kind of happened. And so far I am really satisfied with it. Some tweaks might be worth it, like maybe lowering the amount of Infernal Tributes for a higher amount of Tombs, so... Uh, I can have them if needed. More Xiaras if I had, but I don't. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Really nice deck, pro plays really nice. Uh, I still think that I would change uh, basic Nephoros to advanced, or not advanced Nephoros, but to Enoch if I had Enoch. But I don't have Enoch, so I'm sticking with the basic Nepharos, which works really nice for this deck. Uh, allows me some slowing, so I can sneak some Banshee damage, or Spirit damage, or Zombie damage, should I need to. Damn. I could use his ability to lower damage dealt to my creatures with Suffocate. Like, I could... Um, uh, basic Nefaros, my Shrieking Banshee, and then Suffocate, and Banshee would stay alive. Although with Reanimates in deck, I don't really need to Banshee to stay alive. Yeah, but that's 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 the deck. Do we get to building the uh, Goblins now? Nope. Because last week two more things happened. Like, first of all, I've grabbed a... Um, key for Vampire Overlord DLC on Steam from uh, from Spellweaver's Reddit. And people sometimes drop free keys out there they have stolen from God knows where. Uh, so yeah, you might want to check the um, Spellweaver's Reddit from time to time. You might be lucky to get a Vampire Overlord or any other of these Steam DLC decks. And honestly, uh, they serve two things. First of all, that's a little, a little bit of a card boost. Although, unluckily, they have no rares. At least this one doesn't. I'm not sure about the other two. Uh, and frankly, this deck sucks. I mean, I'm really happy because I've gotten three vampirisms of that deck, and this is like the best thing that happened. Three vampirisms is a lot. And that's a very powerful card that can be used in many, many ways. But it's like, I, I'm not sure why would you put Force Mage Protectors and Library Guards in here? What's the point? I, 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 don't, I don't see it. I would definitely replace them with something that is genuinely... Um, genuinely Dominion and make it a monocolor deck. Maybe maybe put some uh, whatever they are called uh, power surges in here. Also, those decks run twenty shrines, which is good, I guess. I mean, yeah, I, I personally run um, personally run eighteen in the decks I build. Let's check the free for all decks. How are they doing? DK had nineteen. Rage Agro had eighteen. Diogen was running 20, 
Zombies was running 19, although Diogen is running um, Trigons. Energy Aggro was running 19. Angels was running 20. Grand Reunion was running 90. Innocred Souls is my deck. Rage Dominion ran 20. Corruption Control ran 19. Oh, for Aspect ran 21. That's insane. And that's all. Starter decks run 18 for. Oh, wait, Red Souls is not a starter deck. Angelic Legions runs 23. You fucking kidding me? Wow. That explains why this deck is so bad. Undead Power is my deck. Undead Hordes. Also 23. Spectral Power. 23. Goblin Assault, 23. Do all starter decks run 23 shrines? That's insane. Ooh, god, 24 on implants. That's awful. Anyway, um, but this deck is a decent, um, whatever it is called. Uh, it could be used as a def de de decent template to edit it and build something of your own upon it. I think about editing it to something mono corruption, uh, mono dominion. Sorry. Yeah, definitely with vamp vampirism, which is good. I mean, if you are going vamp lump, I could understand, but dropping wisdom only to get a few force mages and some library guards, I don't really feel it's justified. But whatever. I mean, it, this deck is generally weird. Like, I have. Uh, four mo metabolic overchargers. What for, really? I mean, I want to drop creatures to make them vampires and to heal through their vampiric powers. Honestly, I don't think if colonies wouldn't be better for this deck. Two cathedrals of the night, that's very good and that definitely helps. Uh, personally, I don't know if I wouldn't go for uh, even three or maybe even four Cathedral of the Knights because this is a really crucial skill that you would really like to have. Really powerful. Helms of Dominion, again, something that I am not fully um, convinced about and I think I would rather see more Assassinates for some potential removal rather than Helms of Removal or Mind Extortions. I mean, man, Mind Extortion is pretty good because the... Uh, uh, because of the current meta, current meta is pretty much uh, spell heavy, so getting some spell counters like Mind Extortion definitely helps. Although this is not something that, in my opinion, really hurt helps uh, this deck. Kata kinda does, kinda doesn't. Really situational. This this card is awfully situational. Spoiled aristocrats, they are good. They are really. Powerful early damage that you know you can you can use. I would really love to see when editing deck some sort of a mana curve, something similar to when you build draft or um, I think trials deck also show you the the mana curve how you're doing. The regular deck editor doesn't do that, which kind of sucks. Um, I'm not sure if this deck comes with anything else. I don't really think so. What is even better is the Wrath of Shamans 2.0 over here, which turns out to be a promo code. This is still active. You could go to a site that I will link in the video description for you. I would drop it on the annotation on the on the screen, but annotations are no longer a thing on YouTube, in case you didn't realize. <laughs> They are like, I, I think YouTube disabled adding annotations somewhere around May. So that would be like, what, three, four months already since you cannot add annotations anymore. They were, they were kind of a ignored feature anyway. But that's, that's basically what it was. So I'm gonna drop the link in the video description. I cannot drop a clickable link on the screen for you this time. Uh, and you can try and grab this promo code. God knows how long this uh, promo will last and how many keys they have left. But you can definitely try and grab it. It comes with the deck, the Rage uh, card deck, and like 50,000 gold if I remember correctly. 
or whatever the amount, well, something about a decent amount of uh, gold. So I really recommend this deck. It also doesn't bring any rares, only, um, sorry, epics. Epics, it brings rares, it doesn't bring epics. Just like this deck, it brings um, rares, but it doesn't bring epics. Also, all these cards, they come to, into your collection, even if you had already, like, full set of those, you get another four cards of those, so you can uh, disenchant them. Like, if I go to crafting right now, you can see I can quick unbind for a lot of cards, including one heroic, which is cancel. The... Um, Surplus advanced the spinner that I have. I'm not dis uh, I'm not disenchanting anything right now Just saying um, they will get automatically replaced with the um, with the uh, um, Foil cards if I'm not mistaken because I don't think they come with foil cards on their own So basically what is this deck is kind of a poor version of um, Of shaman's deck um, Shaman's Totem deck. Why I'm saying poor? Because it's running kind of low on totems. I mean, why not run four totems of swiftness? Why not run four totems of legends? I don't know. Why not run four totems of um, Rongokn? I can tell you why. Because um, it's rare. And, you know, giving four of those for free, yeah, kind, kind of an overkill. I, I am aware that, that, they, that they consider the value while doing this. I don't know why it's not using the um, mm, 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 Mountain Sanctuary. Because Mountain Sanctuary would be really nice for that deck. So, once again, this is a an average deck on its own, but a nice... Uh, Nice base to edit it and build something powerful of your own. Like, why take um, three ogre captives? I don't know. Honestly. What's, what's the point? I understand everything else because every other creature in this deck is a shaman, which is crucial. It has four offering yard priests, which is like the, the most important thing to do with your... Uh, 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 whatever it is called... Um, can I clone this deck? Don't think so. Yeah, that would be a useful feature to make some tweaks to the decks without having to waste your current deck. Nope. Not from the inside. Without wasting your current deck or, um, you know, having to start from the scratch. Maybe I would go a little bit lower on the lightning bolts uh, in favor of more fire bolts and more fire blasts. Also, three fire blasts, that's a blessing. Oh my god, with that, I have full collection of fire blasts, and this card is insanely powerful. Two boiling blows again, I'm not 100% sure about this card. Yeah. There's something, but. A light shaman enters the field, you may pay to transform Totem into 4 4 2. <sighs> yeah. So I think I, I would slightly edit this deck, and and uh, I think I'd go into playing Shamans, really. Yeah, I'd, I'd change it only a little bit. Like, four of those, four of those, and I think I'd toss four of those as well. Uh, maybe reducing on the Ancestor's Guide, definitely reducing on Boiling Bloods, um, on Og Captives, getting more Totems of Swiftness and of Legends. Getting the um, shrines that are required for the thing to to draw totems and all that stuff. But keeping in mind that it's awfully late right now, it's <sighs> definitely over half an hour. I think we're around 40, 40 minutes of video right now. <sighs> and I've gotten Frizash the Annihilator. It's pretty nice. But I think I'll open with the um, Zash Flamebringer for the time being. I'll enable green. I'll type goblin in and I'll see what goblins do I want. Like, first of all, I want firebrands, okay? I want four full set of four firebrand goblins. Which I'm gonna immediately follow with full set of Gibo and Ronnie's. Okay? 
why? If this is a goblin deck, I want to benefit as much as possible from the fact that Firebrand makes everyone swift. This is why I'm pulling them. Then, Ram Gakken. I want Ram Gakken. Um, yeah, because he's powerful. I want Gibo's, Gibo and Ronnie's because they will make the numbers also swift from uh, Firebrand Goblin. And here is where it's getting difficult. Like, I'm thinking maybe some Goblin Looters for additional draws. Maybe some Shaman Fire Dancers for um, insane speed. But no, definitely, first of all, I need all the Gurkho Tribe Warriors. Because they benefit from the... Um, Goblins entering the field, and I probably will have a lot of goblins entering the field. Kind of feel like dropping two disciples, maybe two fireworkers, maybe an anarchist or two. I don't know. I'll hold on to the anarchists. I think I'll get some more um, turn one drops, and this is like a good time to start thinking about the shrines. So I'm gonna quickly move into shrines. I'm gonna cut the goblin part, and I'll see what I have. So. This won't help me, this won't help me, and this definitely won't help me. Oh my god, so many shrines. Um, next time you play a level 1 creature this turn, uh, another elite creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. This is something that I might want to consider. I will be playing a um, decent amount of level 1 creatures. Elven Sanctuary and Elf you control? Uh, no, I won't be controlling any elves. And return a creature you control to its owner's hand. I am not 100% sure about it. So I'm gonna open with 12 of those, 12 of those, and one. One of these, because I have only one. Uh, yeah, why 12? Because this is the default amount you pull when you draw four. And I'm gonna drop. 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's say like 5, 1, and 7. I would definitely put more Moonlight uh, Monuments if I had, but I don't, so that's how it is. Actually, how is the... Um, all creatures you play this turn are swift until end of turn, so not really, it won't really help. So really the only things to consider right now is either uh, Nivad Revered, Revered or um, Basic Zash. Uh, if I had full collection of heroes, I could think about the other heroes, either Kainu or, uh, or Burke, although... Bark? Burke? I think Bark. Bark, Burke. Something like this. <clears throat> yeah, why I don't want Zash the Annihilator? Because I plan to drop a lot of creatures, and most of those creatures are weak creatures, so I don't want them dying to Zash the Annihilator. So let me get the Flamebringer again. Disable these and think of what else I could try dropping in here. Brothers in Arms, maybe, but not necessarily. Battle of the Winds. Now, you know what I want to drop? I want to drop some removal spells. And by removal spells, I mean, of course, four fireballs. Hmm, that's tricky. And it's like, I, I still have to consider the amount of um, total cards. I have some added removal in form of the Disciples of Zash. Playing a lot of cheap, cheap cards opens the possibility for a black market. Do I want it? I feel like I might want a couple of massive assaults and at least a couple of fire blasts. A couple of words of fire that will be definitely helpful. Tio Tidal Wave. Wasp Swarm, Veggie Blockade won't be good. A creature for each of my nature levels. I don't really, pl I don't really plan to go beyond one nature level. This is like the um, general idea right now. You know, with uh, two um, Goblin Fireworkers, 
just to work anti um yeah good anti artifact i think i'm gonna add a couple of tests of time just for the sake of getting something uh, uh, um well they are not that that good i mean that would they would be better if i had um if I had more shamans, but I'm not really playing shamans that much, so whatever. Yeah, Gruko Tribe Warrior is basically Goblet version of Grove Guardian. So, as I'm playing more goblins than elves, I'd rather use this. Might think about using the um, Death Trap blocks. Ranged Swift. Another creature you control dies. What is this using? The it's channeling of creature cards. It's actually not that bad to be honest. A flying BS fairy, moonlight patrol, which is pretty good. This is elves. This is pretty decent, although I'm not sure if I want it. Hmm. A unicorn might prove somewhat useful, but also I don't know if I want it. This is getting to, to like difficult part, because I'm getting low on the card slots, so I have to be very cautious about what I'm putting right now. I've put most of the core... <laughs> no, wait. This is an orc shaman, and it's not a goblin, and it's not a deck. Um, so, yeah. Right now, it's it's all about um, adding the support cards. Like, I have most of the core cards that, you know, this deck won't work without. They are already in there. I think I might want to go with four of those. They are speedy. They are tough. They serve their purpose. I mean, tough. They have uh, good damage. What else? What else? Do I have four of those? Yes, I do have four of those. Let, let me go back to searching at Goblin. Well, two damage among other creatures you control. You control at end of combat. But they don't have to be creatures that took part in the combat, nor they have to be a creatures that are alive. I'm not sure about the Gurkha tribe shamans. I mean, my emblems, yeah, kind of good, but, you know, not, not awfully. I think I drop a couple of looters. I'll boost the amount of uh, of uh, fireworkers to four. Three more cards to drop in the deck. Do I have four copies? Four, 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 two, 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 four, four. Um, like I'm filling. Like maybe. Maybe a couple of those. And I have one more slot, and I think I would occupy it with what? With Ancestor's Guide? Oh, I already have my speed department. Well, I am going with two fire levels for Ramgaken. Um, let me take a look at spells again. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll, I'll just top it up with a, with a spell. From the front line to the support or vice versa, dry card, so that's decent. Additional card draws are decent. Wait, Shrines 13. Uh, that's not enough. 15. 17. 18. Now better. Now that's better. Okay, so I think I'd drop a couple of Ramgattens. If that's the case. Uh... Uh, 
I'll drop the fireworker and I should drop one more thing although I'm not sure what I want to drop now yeah the rest of those cards are pretty important unless I'll ditch both of the looters And what should I get instead? Another fire blast? Another fire worker. You know this this uh, deck will be definitely behind on draws. You can already see that. I'll put it like this. We have slightly more emphasis on the um, right shrines. Um, I think I'll draw a third fire blast. Bam! Deck done. They didn't even took that long. <laughs> Although you know, with with just Gurko Tribe Shaman and two tests of time, I'm starting to really question: Do I really want to go with the um, Nature Path? Um, and if we're at it, let's try and build a new deck that will work on what Wrath of Shamans brought. Yeah, we will build a prime example. 18. Prime example of the um, totem deck. Fourteen artifacts. Creatures. S H A. And four of those. Four of those. Four of those. Um, four of those. Four of those. I have fifty-two. Wahoo, bloody brilliant. You know, I'm kind of thinking if I were to go for this, um, it's sharpshooter. This is a shaman. Uh, pay for mana costs. Oh, shadow, and this is a shaman as well. Kind of a weird combination. Allied shaman enters the field, you may pay one to give. Uh, creature you control... Creatures you control, so is it like all creatures? Totem of the Moon, Sprouting Totem, I'm not sure. Let's see what totems do I have here. Enters the field, one, to look at top four cards of your deck, you may play a corruption spell from them. Not really running corruption spells in here. You may pay one, the enemy hero loses one life, and you gain one life. That's nice, Totem of Tortures. Well, doesn't seem to have any. So should I? Hmm. That's a shaman. That's a shaman. You may pay 2 to return a creature with 1 HP from your graveyard onto the field. Offering your priest. Disciple of Zash. Although I'm thinking maybe I should just go to... Oh. To removal. And just drop something decent like 4 of those. Two of those and two of those. 18 shrines, 60 cards. Looks good to me. Yup. I, I think it's nice. Can I rename from here? No, I cannot. Mm, sucks. Totems! Bloody brilliant. Should we build another deck? I kinda feel like building another deck. Oh my god, we're building a third deck today and I, I, I'll, I'll show you because I have this very, very weird idea right now. Um, 
crap. I have only one of those. But I was thinking about going something like four of those. Um, then switching to creatures and then going nuts on cheap creatures. By cheap I mean creatures with ideally a cost of two or precisely two. Um, show me, show me, show me her ability. Whenever you play one of those creatures, uh, Dia would be helpful, but not for that. So let's assume like a full set of those. Okay. Uh. Full set of those, okay. Full set of those, full set of those, full set of those, full set of those. Yeah, uh, basically, I mean, anything that has a cost of two is like the uh, prime candidate for being included in this deck because they give the best uh, value out of it. Thinking, thinking. Like, am I am I clear what I'm trying to achieve with this deck? Yeah, going with the mostly low cost deck that will rely on black market to. Dr oh my god. Although you know, if he draws a five cards with a cost of two. With a combined mana cost of five or more into your hand, so he will have to put three in hand. Only two go boom. So what? Four of these? Top it up with some nice spells. By nice spells, I mean, of course, that thing. Um. A couple of dead things. Need my shrines now, don't I? Yeah, but I also want to... Hmm. Not sure about the mantle. Call of Jalia? Hmm. Well, yeah, of course, this is like a mock-up deck, mock deck because I don't have four of these. I'm actually, I should look into um, something that requires more nature levels because I will need two nature levels for her ability. Let's let's get the shrines. Not really, uh, not really, definitely not. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Let's let's go modest on it. And let's hit it like that. And with that in mind, I need four more cards. And I think it's not that bad idea to drop some high efficiency. Um, Hmm. High efficiency, high cost, high level requirements, Fay of Charm. Nope, four Sun Chaser, alright. You know, this in drawing some spells, no skills. Uh, I'm not sure about it. I would really have to see how it will really work. And I cannot because I have only one copy of Black Market. 
and that won't really cut it. This is the amount of energy. That's actually way too much energy. I shouldn't be playing that much energy. Should I? It doesn't look like a viable deck to me. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Um. Well, I'm gonna call her Black Market Neva. Cool. So. Holy shit, that was a lot of deck building today. And are we... Yup, I think that right now we've passed the one hour mark of the video length. You know what I want to... I want to play a game. Gobos? Gobos. Let's, let's check, check out Gobos on... Wait a sec. Seventy fame. Yeah, I was checking the rewards, but they have the same rewards. Let's uh, check it quickly on Easy AI. Let's see how it will fare. Uh, dragon. Awful, really. Although I have Firebrand, that is good. Now what I think. Crap. I will Dio, Gibo and Ronnie. Crap, another nature shrine. I will get the nature level, I drop the um, tribe warrior. It's freezing me, that's okay. I'm not sure if I want to go one mana one card or I, let's go one mana one card here. I will be going rage next turn and oh my god. Well, Gibo and Ronnie would give him enough tack to get rid of um, Rally Guard. But I wish I could use Firebrand before Gibo and Ronnie. Which would be possible, but let's 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 skip it for now. Let's uh, let this guy attack for one. It will of course be blocked by Rally Guard. Yeah, so obvious. Okay, that thing is too slow. We don't give a f about it uh, because it's too slow to to bother us. I drop that. They boost him. Oh my god! Oh, it's one attack, one speed. Perfect. I thought it's one attack, one HP. Really? Well, I still don't care. He is too slow. She plays nothing. God, how I love the AI. They are so stupid. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna toss the Moonlight Monument. Now, I don't really have any level 1 creatures worth playing right now, so I'll just Firebrand Goblin. This boosts my um, little guy. Gulko guy. Oh my god. This is perfect. No, this is not perfect. But still, this is perfect. I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do now. Yeah, the next step in development. I'm pretty sure she will attack. Yeah, she attacks because uh, those cannot block her anymore. So she feels so bold attacking. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but that's not the case. Uh, I'm gonna 1 1. Rather than levels. That's nice, although this is severely weakened right now. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. Oh crap, no, it won't work because it has to be a level 1 creature. So I use that. I drop Goblin Fireworker. I boost this guy. He is boosted from the Goblin Plate, so I can get rid of the second guard. Oh crap, if she... Fuck, she pacifies it. Uh, 
That's really not nice. Really not nice. And this guy is a bit of a problem. Fire blast. Oh yes. I think I'll deal that thing. F Miss Dio. That is always a bummer. Yeah, I'll do that. If she decides to block and she doesn't, which is better for me, I don't want her to block. I want to deal as much face damage as possible. Yeah, it can, can get pretty nasty pretty quickly. That is something we'd rather avoid. Not the best. Um, that's decent. I'll be dropping this. Declaring attack. See if she blocks. She blocks. That's good. That basically means I won't drop Disciple right now. Instead I'm dropping the Shaman Fire Dancer. Um, that is not nice. <laughs> Let me try and DO the East Nature Shrine. Perfect. Well, Ram Gakken. is too weak. Oh, I won already. Perfect. Why I wanted the um, rage level to do something like that. Click, click, and click. Shazam. Getting rid of that thing, because this is flying, it shoots for two, it basically wipes every card of mine. Yeah, this thing, I can at least fight it, okay? Yep, why I say this deck works. If it can defeat the easy AI, it's not like every deck can defeat the easy AI. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was that was decent. I should also think about building something better uh, around the vamp lamp. We don't have time for that, do we? Let's let's uh, use the advanced despina just as they um, think we should do. I'll go with three cathedrals of the night. Do I want assassins guild? Yeah, hell yeah, why not? Pump to eighteen shrines. I'm going pure um, dominion with that. I'll drop four power surges. I think I'll drop four of these guys. Um, I definitely want to drop four of these guys. I have only three of those. That kinda sucks, but I'm still doing it. The question is how high on level... Oh my god, I was supposed to build something useful on Rygon. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Hmm. It might actually be something. Uh, yeah, more creatures. I need more creatures. What it actually does. Plus one attack and our life bound. Uh, too bad I have only one of those, but I'm still dropping that. Mm, no, 
harpy would be painful to me. I don't want to drop the harpy on top of that. I want three of those guys. I want full set of these. Do I want moons to miner? I don't have Captain of the Revolt. I'd really love to have Captain of the Revolt because it would make for a beautiful, beautiful um, um, slave deck. But I don't have Captain of the Revolt and that kind of sucks. Do I want Katas? That's the question. Do I want Overwhelming Forces? Maybe I want to overwhelm my... No, not really. Hmm. Yeah, well, right now it's... Uh... It's decent low level deck, and I think I don't really want to breach this. I think I'll drop a couple of Katas just in case. I uh, might want to drop a couple of Mistresses of Shadows. A couple of Murder Instincts. And top it off with... Prinha? Nah. Don't know what to top it off with. Mm, yeah, generally speaking, I would use something like, um, I don't know. I really have no idea what to put in the last slot. I don't want anything that goes above two levels. I don't want to breach the two level, two level thing of that deck. Wait, she is three levels. Crap. This is all why I wanted Coronis here. Coronis is two levels, if I remember correctly. Shouldn't there be like a show heroes button? Yeah, Coronis is two levels, and that would be perfect for this deck. Stronghold Metropolis? Nah. Uh. Infinite value from uh, a lot of mana that I might have with this deck. Nope, I am not satisfied with it. Although, wait, we're running 26 creatures, 15 spells. Okay, maybe it's not that bad. I would definitely alter it based on the uh, amount of cards that I don't have. I think I would really like more Vampire Caches. I definitely would like more, more Vampirism. Oh my god, these stuck on top of each other, oh my god. You know, theoretically, dropping Skata into the mix wouldn't be that bad of an idea, except it forces me to go four levels. Still, I have only one Skata. It kinda slows the mana ramp. Although, if with this deck, I'm not entirely like prepared to waste a lot of mana every turn. Not enough, um... <laughs> Gobbles are above the spina. I'll call you Vamp. Mono Vamp. I don't know, not, not fully, not fully um, satisfied with it, but it's okay-ish. They stuck on top of each other, oh my god. Yeah, that means that the vampires I control could get plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 attack, that's a lot. Anyway, uh, that will be for today. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next week.
Take care.